Today we're going to look at solving word problems involving factoring polynomials. This is 6-9. Here's the equation. So before we get started, let's translate. The product, actually let me erase that. Start with the first operation I see is a product. So now I'm going to send that over to the and sign. Okay, what comes right after that? One more than a number. What comes after that? Four less than a number. Then I have an is. And then I have 36. All right, so the one, I'm just going to write my regular one. For a number, we don't know what it is, so I'm going to call that x. Now, when I have more than, that means plus. But because I have the word than, I have to crisscross my terms around the plus sign and put x plus 1. I'm doing x plus 1. And then I'm going to, I remember I sent my product over to the and sign. So that means times. Now the next one is 4. The number is x, but this time it's less than. And because it says than, I have to crisscross my terms to x minus 4. My is means equals, and I have 36. Now, before I can continue to, um, the only way to solve this is through the zero product property. But I can't do that yet because I can't set it to zero. I have to do my double distributing with x plus 1 times the quantity of x minus 1. So I multiply um, my x times x. I get x squared. I'm multiplying my x times negative. Actually, I really like to do um, the sum is my middle term, so that would be a negative 3x. And the product of these last two numbers will be negative 4 equals 36. So step one, I'm distributing. Okay, step two, set it equal to zero. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to have to subtract 36 from both sides. And now I'm left with x squared minus 3x minus 40 equals zero. Now I'm ready to factor again. Step four, I'm going to factor. Do your x marks a spot, what multiplies to negative 40 and adds to negative 3. That would be an 8 and a 5. Uh, we would have to have the 8 be negative. So when I'm factoring this, okay, remember the square root of x squared is x. And this, the 5 and the 8, it's going to be plus 5 minus 8. Okay, now, remember to set each equal to 0. To get the x alone, x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5, subtract 5, x equals negative 5. x minus a equals 0, add 8, add 8, x equals 8. So my solution is going to be here in blue. My two solutions are negative 5 comma 8. Now, you want to make sure and check that. Stop the recording because I'm going to erase the colored and I'll show you the PowerPoint. Um, so stop it if you want to take notes on what I've written so far. Alright, now let's go back and you can see the PowerPoint. It might be a little bit clearer for you. They don't do the X marks the spot, but Make sure you're checking it. Substitute what you've found for the x's and make sure that it works. Because, remember, the first time I'm just substituting when x equals negative 5, I substitute that in. Negative 5, both times. And we get negative 4 times negative 9 makes 36, so that works. 
Try it again. When x equals 8, substitute it in. And we get positive 9 times positive 4 is 36. So both of these solutions work. So those are the solutions to this problem. All right, rectangle. The length of a rectangle is two feet less than three times the width. Step one, as soon as I mention the word rectangle, draw it. Okay, now the next question that you need to ask yourself. In terms of the rectangle, which dimension do they give less information on? That would be the width. So that is what I'm going to make set equal to x. The rest of it, you can see, I've got length is 2 feet less than 3 times width. So we have 3, remember width is x, I have a 2, less than, but remember there's that than, so I have to switch my terms around that minus sign. So it's going to be the length is equal three x minus two. Okay. All right, so now we're going to, we know what our length is, we know what our width is. Now we're just going to use the area formula. Okay. And we're going to substitute in. So all they're doing is here they have the width times Although the PowerPoint doesn't do it, I want you to do it. If there's an area formula, I want to see it used. Now remember, they gave us that the area A equals 65. So I can substitute that in for the area. Okay. Now I do my double distributed. I, actually, it's just distributing 3x squared minus 2x equals 65. I'm next going to set it equal to 0, so I'll have to subtract 65 from both sides. And I'm left with 3x squared minus 2x minus 65. Now I know you think this looks awful when we have a lead coefficient. Remember, I'm going to do my x marks a spot, multiply the first and last terms. I'm going to have negative 195 and what adds to negative 2. Now remember that's two digits in. Now that's 195. Sorry. Negative 195 negative 2. All right that's two digits apart. So now I have to problem solve. What times another number equals negative 195? That's two digits apart. I know that when I do my factor tower, 1 times 195, when I get 5, I know 5 goes into that at least 30 times. So that's not 5 digits apart. I've got to move in. Since this number 195 ends in a 5, I have to think of a number that's going to be divided into 5s. So if I, I'm going to go with 10. But 10, when I multiply 10 by any number, it ends in a 0, so it can't be 10. So I'm going to the next one, 15. And when I, multiply, when I divide 15 into 195, I get 13. So that works. 15 and 13. Now, my 13, to make it negative, my 15 will have to be negative. My 13 will have to be positive. So remember, I use the first term, 3x squared. The last term, 65, and now I'm going to use plus, actually minus, I'm going to switch it around and put my 15 over here, minus 15x plus 13x, and then I'm going to factor by grouping. I'm going to divide out my 3x, and I'm left with x minus 5. I'm going to divide out my plus 13 and I'm left with x minus 5. So my binomial ends up being, my factored out trinomial ends up being x minus 5 times 3x plus 13. 
equals zero. All right, I now have to erase this so I can get some more space. So if you need to figure out how to get from here to here, stop the recording and write these notes. Otherwise, let's keep moving on. All right, so here's what we have. Now we have to set them both equal to zero. And when I do that, I get x equals negative 13 over 3. Remember, uh, 3x plus 13 equals 0. Subtract 13. Just do your inverse operations. You end up with this. And then I get x add 5. So it's positive 5. Now, does that appear like we are done? Well, it may appear like we're done, but if you notice, I want you to remember this is a rectangle. And when I measure rectangles, is there ever a negative number on a measuring tape? No. So that makes this term invalid, the negative 13 over 3. So now to finish this up, to find the dimensions, we're going to say x is equal to 5. And then 3x minus 2, 3 times 5, 15 minus 2, is 13. So my dimensions are 5 and 13. And that is the final answer. Now remember, if you have a negative value when you're looking for area, it's an invalid solution. All right, so let's move on. Next one. base of a triangle is four meters longer than the height. Find the height if the area of the triangle is 16 meters. This time they're just asking us for the height. I don't have to find both parts, but I still have to do the same thing. What do they give us less information on? That would be the height. So I'm going to call the height x. And my base, we're going to call um, x plus 4 because it's 4 meters longer than 4 plus x. All right, the formula for a triangle is 1 half the base times the height. So I substitute. The base is 1 half plus 4. The height is x, and the a is 16. Now, we can deal with this fraction in a couple ways. I can clear it. I want to remind you, this entire amount right here is one term because it's multiplied. It's a number times a number times a number. So it's all one, no one number. There's no plus sign. It's one term. So if I'm going to clear that fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides or both terms by 2. What that allows me to do is cancel out the 2 on the 1 half on the left side and I'm left with x plus 4 times the quantity of x equals 32. I do my distributing and then subtract 32, set it equal to 0, and now I'm going to factor this. What multiplies to negative 32 and adds to 4 positive 4, negative 8. So my solutions will be negative 4, positive 8. Now, which of these is the right solution? Hopefully you chose 8 because remember there are no negative values in area. So my height is 8. My base would be 12 but it's not asking for that. Now let's go back a little bit. I want to show you another thing you could have done. Whoops. Sorry about that. You could have gone to um, Okay, whoops. There we go. I could have distributed in and gotten 1 half x plus 2 
times x equals 16. Then distribute in, so distribute in there. Now distribute in the other way. 1 half x squared plus 2x equals 16. Now I could clear my 2 and do this. I get x squared plus 4x equals 32, which is the same thing. Subtract 32. So two different ways to clear that fraction. Okay. All right, one last problem. Okay, product of two consecutive integers is 90. Remember when we're doing consecutive integers, we're looking for numbers in a row. That's what that means. So we're going to call our first integer x, and our second integer will be x plus 1. So if I'm looking for the product, I have to multiply those together. And it's going to is means equals 90. So I double distribute, I mean I, I distribute the x, I'm going to subtract it, set it equal to 0, and then I'm going to factor. What multiplies to negative 90 and adds to positive 1? I'm not doing the x marks a spot, but because my kids are about to get back, but you can do your x marks a spot if you need to, and I get positive 10, negative 9. So when I find my solution, I end up with negative 10 and positive 9. Now, please watch this part carefully. When you're checking, notice this. If x is equal to negative 10, I substitute it in, it works. Okay, so what would be the next consecutive integer from ne negative 10? That would be negative 9. So I continue. Remember we have a second solution. So one set of consecutive integers is negative 10 and negative 9. But remember, we have that positive 9. So if I substitute that in, I end up with, that works too. So if the first integer is 9, when I add one more to it, I end up with positive 10. So I actually have four possible answers. I need to write all four answers in my answer column. So let me write it in blue and show you how you might do it, or in red I guess I'm going to be, negative 10, comma, negative 9, or, 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 9, comma, 10. Okay? And that is the end of the lesson. Pause the recording if you need to take more notes. There's the bell. Kids are coming.